been a season of surprises. The top two bump skiers taken out by injury. Bradley Holmes, Cameron Boyle, never made it to the start. But Scott Cox made quite a start. A man many thought too old won the first event of the 95 season in Heavenly Valley. And a young man finally reached his potential. Jared Simmons, after three years of frustrating results, won at Hunter Mountain. And foul weather followed us wherever we went on the Paul Mitchell World Series of Mogul. I'm Duffy Wilson and welcome to Vail, Colorado for the final stop and the championships of the Paul Mitchell World Series of Moguls. We are in skiers heaven. The Colorado Rockies over the last 28 days have received seven feet of snow and Vail has received 14 inches of snow overnight. I talked about skiers heaven. How about bump skiers, competitors hell? That is Look Ma, and at the top it's 35 degrees. It's straight down a very difficult hill. Joining me on the telecast are ESPN analyst, Olympic bronze medalist, two-time world champ, Nelson Carmichael. Nelson, I saw you up there this morning. This is tough. Yeah, I got the chance to take a couple of runs this morning. I had a great time, actually, but the top part of the course is steep, and the fact that it's so steep, the snow can't stick to it very well, so you end up getting all these rocks, you get grass up there, all this debris that the skiers have to negotiate through on their way to the first air, which is also right up there in the steep part of the course. When they get in the middle part of the course, finally they can take a little breather, get in a good line, a good rhythm, but they have to make their point with the judges in a hurry because this course is also short. It's tough out there. It's extreme skiing and it's a great test to find the national champion. We're ready for the excitement of the quarterfinals. And there is the quarterfinal ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the top and look at the bottom. Jared Simmons is seated number one, and Chuck Martin replaced the number two seed. That's the way it's supposed to be. You look at the middle, those are the racers that are trying to get to these number one and two skiers. That's what a bracket is all about. We're ready for the first run of the quarters. It's Jared Simmons of the USA. He will be on the red course, and it'll be Scott Koff of Vail, Colorado on the blue course. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Racers ready. Out they come, and it will be Koff on the blue course. Jared Simmons on the red. You can see all those rocks up in the top part of the blue course, especially Koff got off the jump. Jared had trouble on his landing. Scott Koff defying the odds and making it through that rough section on Lukma. Back and twister spread there, double twister spread for Jared Simmons, but I'm afraid it's over for Jared Simmons, the number one seed. Scott Koff, the crowd favorite in Vail. Scott Koff is the winner. A lot closer, Nelson, than I thought. The score, 13-12. Now normally on a course, the first air is no big deal, but here at Lukma, it is so steep that you have to land very solidly off the top. Jared does not, he has to hip check to slow down, slows down too much, has to start again, he's out of it. The Paul Mitchell World Series of Moguls, presented by Patron, is brought to you by Paul Mitchell, professional salon hair care product. We'll be right back to Vail, Colorado with more bump skiing right after Red course ready, blue course ready, racers ready. You better be ready for this because they're on course. Welcome back to Vail. It's Kene on the red course, Hill on the blue. Dave Hill got around those rocks pretty well, was able to stay ahead into that first jump, but it looks like Kene now with a slight lead. Kene is a fast skier from Lac Lusaw, France. The Frenchman can fly. Big air there from Kene. Dice double twister spread and first to the line. Jan Kene advances 14-11, and by .22 seconds, he gets that freestyle differential time. Kene moves up. 
Jan Kane now off the second air, double twister spread. He's a little short on the second twister here, but a big spread, and he gets a great landing, lands with lots of speed that carries him to the finish line. Justin Patnode will be up next on the blue, and Gary Margot on the red, but how about a battle of nicknames? It's Justin Jet Turn Patnode going up against Gary Bomba Margot. Red course ready. Blue course oh, yeah. ready. Racers ready. And busting out of the gate first is Pat Note. He's used to these extreme conditions. He competes in some extreme contests once in a while when he's not a mogul skier. Margot from Vail, Colorado, and Justin Patno does his skiing at A Base and two Colorado vets. We've got a good duel going here. They look even off the second jump. Margo there with some Daphne's and a big heli from Patnode. Margot across the line first. Margot will get that freestyle point in the timing. The differential goes to Margot. Patnode with a great helicopter. I always enjoy watching nice helicopters. It's a nice floater for Justin. He over rotates slightly, and Gary Margot answers with a Daffy Twister Daffy. Little back on the third Daffy, but a nice triple. And it's a red course winner, Gary Margot. The judges say he wins by one point. And Nelson, how does that work? Now as we look at this replay, let's take a look at what the judges are looking for. We have five judges who score turns, air, speed, and overall out of a possible 25 points. The skier with the most points moves on, and the loser goes home. Our final pairing in this round of 16. On the blue course, it's Scott, Skyman Harrington. They call him Skyman because he flies. He's out of Squaw Valley, California, the 32-year-old vet. On the red course, the man off the U.S. team in 1993, he was the number one skier on the Pro Mogul Tour. It's Chuck Martin. Martin on the red, red and the Skyman on the blue. Blue course ready. Racers ready, go. <laughs> Now, Harrington's had a great line on the upper part of the course. Let's see, oh, if he can do it. A little bit of a hip check there, but they're even. Nelson has been so tough on the blue course, but the skiers are just gritting it out. And look at the Skyman fly. Well, there's a big air in the red course now for Chuck Martin, and you can see he lands way down the hill. Good run there for Chuck Martin. I think he'll get that one. By 15-10 margin with a .75 second freestyle timing advantage, Chuck Martin will advance. Vance, he moves up. Scott Skyman Harrington will ski another day. And that sets up our semifinal bracket. It's Scott Koff on the top. He'll see Jan Kinney from Lac Lusaw, France. To the bottom of those four skiers we go. It's Gary Margot from Vail. He'll meet Chuck Martin. You know, I had a chance to go out with our producer director, Scott Ogle, and ski this terrific mountain. We got some great shots. I got a little bit of air, and it was a lot of fun. Woo! Oh, it's very freezing here. famous for its wide open cruises.
Welcome back to Vail, Colorado. Duffy Wilson and Nelson Carmichael and the women bumpers. Let's take a look, Nelson, at the earlier action in the women's competition. Earlier today in the round of four, Rachel Savitt found a terrific line on the top part of the blue course to go around the gnarly rocks, and she kept her speed up to beat Kristen Brown all the way down the course. That was good enough to put Rachel into the final. Meanwhile, Patty Sherman, she lost her chance to go into the final as she did some big GS turns in the middle part of the course, and her competitor, Maggie Connor, just skied a very nice run, very tight skiing, especially here in the middle. Maggie Connor and Rachel Savitt will meet in the final. The finals for the women. This is the battle for third place. On the red course, the local favorite, Patty Sherman Koff. She's a coach here. Her kids are cheering her on. She's going up against Kristen Brown from Winter Park, Colorado. Sherman with a nice start there. Let's see if she can get down this top steep part of the course ahead into that first air. Looks fairly even, they both with single spreads up there, trying to put the brakes on, it's still steep. And now they lock into their turns in the middle section of Lukma here, Nelson. Good duel we have going, Kristen Brown a little close to the center line, but she's okay. Twister spread there for Kristen Brown, almost touches down. Patty Sherman now putting the hammer on. Sherman gets to the finish line first. She'll get that freestyle timing point. And Patty Sherman Cobb takes third place at the finals. The score 14 11. Congratulations to both women. Patty Sherman Cough now in the middle section of the red course. She looks pretty good right through here. Maybe a little slow side to side. You can see her feet are spread just a bit. She gets a head throw once in a while on these big bumps. Now she goes off the second air. It's not quite the pop I'm used to seeing from Patty. Well, Nelson, you may be right. And that is the subject of this week's Paul Mitchell Spotlight. It's a tough position to be in because actually I'm second on the tour right now. And um, I'm also six months pregnant, My so wife's pregnant. <laughs> we're expecting a little mogul skier on the way. So I'd say I'm, it definitely I think about it when I'm skiing. You know, it's definitely going to change our lives. We're having a little junior robocop running around, but um, I think it, between the two of us, we do the same thing. We travel together, and um, we're both still planning on competing next year. And it will be Scott Kopp once again, starting off the season with a big win. We'd known each other because we'd both competed on the tour, but he was like the man on the tour. He was always winning, and I wasn't quite in that level yet. So we never really talked to each other until we coached at ski camp together. And um, we just Boom. coached for a week, and after that, we, actually right then we were just the best of friends for about six months. And then we started traveling oh. together on the tour that year. And I don't think we've been apart more than a day since then. <laughs> I proposed to Patty when we were in the Redwoods. It was uh, under the biggest tree in the world. Tallest tree in the world proposed right there. Uh, but I was, was we were on our tandem bike, so if I said no, I was stuck. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so what was Figured I had her. <laughs> Each of us are, is our best coach. Patty's my best coach, and she can tell me, you know, Scott, you have to have fun, or you've got to, you know, work on this technique, or your jumps are good, or whatever, and I can do the same thing, and I think we have a good communication with that. It's not just and the physical part of coaching, we know each other mentally so well, and when it comes to competition on the Mogul Tour, that's what a lot of it is, is mental competition, so we're able to help each other with that a lot. I'd say the hardest part is, like, if I'm in the starting gate and he goes down or the other way around, because for a minute you have to put that person out of your mind and focus on your job is to compete, and you're... You're hoping they're okay, but we've had that happen a couple times where one of us might have crashed and gotten hurt. You know, not too serious, but when you see your husband or wife crash, you know, in front of you, and you think, well, "I'll worry about them later." You know, that's that's kind of unusual, but we've gotten where we can do that pretty well. Well, Nelson, you and I certainly extend our best wishes and congratulations <laughs> to the cops. But let's go back to the top of the course. Our final two women are at the start. This should be an interesting final. Maggie Connor will be on the red course. Maggie was the champ last year on the tour. Rachel Savitt will be on the blue course, and Rachel won the last event. Connor on the red course, Savitt on the blue course. Both former members of the U.S. national team. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Racers ready. Well, I know these two women have been looking forward to this final duel and finally matching up. Rachel with a good line there around the top rocks. Little back on the landing, but they're still neck and neck. 
Maggie now getting a little bit ahead. They can stay nice and tight through here. Nice, clean skiing. That's all they need. Maggie Connor's making a lot of turns, Nelson. Oh, she's got a little sideways Maggie off the lower getting air. getting ahead down there. Got a little sideways, but look at the speed for Maggie Connor. Maybe a little better turns for Rachel Savitt. That's going to be a close one. A .97 second advantage, and a point goes to Maggie Connor on the red course. Maggie Connor regains the stand. She will go to the top. Maggie Connor, number one by 14-11 over Rachel Savage. The two turns judges, the speed judge and the overall judge, all like Maggie Connor's run. You can see she's crooked going into the second air, and the air judge was the only one who kept her back from a clean sweep on her way to victory. The men are coming up next, just four of them left. You stay with us. We'll be back to Vail after this. Welcome back to Vail, Colorado. Looking forward to the semis here, the Paul Mitchell Championship. Joining us in the finish, the sponsors. Couldn't have done it without you guys. There on your right, folks, that's John Paul DeJoria. JP, thanks a lot. Also down there, Mr. Martin Crowley, the big guy right there from Patron. Let's go spend some of their money. Let's go to that semis action. On the red course, the five-time champ, Scott Koff out of Vail, Colorado. And on the blue course, from La Clouse, France, the flying Frenchman, Jan Canet. Canet will be on the blue course. Scott Koff will be on the red course. Koff won the first event of the year, and he won in Japan. Can he be the tour champion? He's got to win this run. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Race is ready. Now remember this course is so short that you can't make any mistakes. They're just amplified in the judges' eyes. Oh, Kane made a good move around the thin snow at the top, and he is hammering down the middle, Nelson. Yeah, we've got a good duel going here. No mistakes so far. Look how even they are. Side judge from both of them, and Scott Koff gets the big air on the red side and finishes across the line first. What a great duel, Scott Koff and Jan Kane. Koff will get that freestyle timing point. 13 to 12, and Jan Kane, the flying Frenchman, advances over the former champ, Scott Koff. Koff got the speed, but Kane got the judges. The battle for the Tour Championship continues. It'll be Gary Margot on the red car. Margot from Vail, Colorado, 30 years old. This will be his best finish of the year. And on the blue course, he is going to meet the 1993 Tour Champion, Chuck Martin, out of Boulder. And Chuck Martin, perhaps with a tough draw here, he can see all the rocks that he has to deal with up top. Margot got off the jump, but not very well, although look how far ahead he is. Let's watch Chuck Martin go. Oh, Martin is turning it on, Nelson, in the middle section of the course. He's not going to let that tough blue course stop him. Margot through the air, not the greatest air, but look at the speed there. Chuck Martin really from a deficit all the way at the start of the course, trying to negotiate around those rocks. Gary Margot with a .78 second advantage, and he gets that point, and it is the winning point as he advances to the finals, 13-12 over Martin. On your left, right from the start, Chuck Martin is in trouble. He takes an inside line over the rocks, but then has to slam into a big bump, practically stops. Right away, he's two seconds behind, and that cost him the run. So, the season of surprises continues. Two skiers who we would have never thought would be in the finals will next do battle for the Tour Championship. It'll be the number 13 seed, Jan Kene, going up against the number seven seed, Gary Marga. Nelson, some great competition here in Vail. You're a man who has dedicated a tremendous amount of your life to mobile skiing. I'm really interested, I know the folks at home are, what do you see for the future of mobile skiing? Well, it's only gonna go up from here. I mean, especially as a young kid now, you can look to the Olympics especially, and so a young guy could come out of Vail or Steamboat or back east or the Midwest, even wherever, as a junior competitor, go through a national system, hopefully make it to nationals, then from there make it to the national team, to the World Cup team, to World Championships, and then to the Olympics, so they can go, wow, you know, I can get there, I can go with the guys that I see on television. 
Then after that point, they have the opportunity to go into pro mogul skiing, win some more cash, ski on some difficult courses here in the States. I think the future is just excellent. I feel the same way. I had an opportunity this year to attend a World Cup race. Spoke with some of the French World Cuppers, and they feel the same way. The pro events in the United States are very interesting to them because they would like to take some of that money. Speaking of money, the sponsors are very dedicated. We look to more money and some more great competitors joining the tour next year. We're ready for the finals. When we come back, we'll be getting it on here in Vail, Colorado. The excitement of mogul skiing continues from Vail, Colorado. The season of surprises? Well, it will be no surprise soon as we will settle the issue of the tour champion. Let's go to the blue course. It's Scott Koff from Vail. Let's go to the red course. It's Chuck Martin from Winter Park. Now, Scott Koff has had the red course most of his duels, and Chuck Martin has been over on blue, so finally they've switched here. Chuck Martin, I think, will have an advantage on the red. It's a bit easier course for him, and he's ahead of Scott Koff right now. Scott Koff close to the center line. He was dusted there, Nelson. Nice air. You can see no bumps really in the bottom part of the course. Chuck Martin barely finishes ahead. Nice duel. Looks like the advantage goes to a red course. Wait, one five Chuck Martin takes third place, and Scott nice. Koff is congratulated by his wife, Patty Sherman Koff. Chuck Martin with a slight advantage from freestyle, and he is number three in the final event. Jan Kane now will meet Gary Margot for the Tour Championship. Jan Kane out of La Clusa, France. He's 23 years old. He will be on the blue course. Gary Margot, the local from Vail, Colorado. This will be the best finish of his professional career. Win or lose, Margot's best day. This is for everything, ladies and gentlemen. $25,000 prize money. Nelson, make the call. Well, it's refreshing to see two new faces in the final. I know they're both excited. Look at Kane go around those top bumps, but he misses the top air. Good clean skiing now in the middle part of the course. Kane, though, is thinking about the top, and what can he do to make up for it? A nice triple by Jan Kane, and it's close at the finish line. Jan Kane had trouble right at the top section of the course and couldn't get off the first jump, effectively taking himself out of the competition. This is a unique and difficult combination. Daffy, Twister, Daffy. Most skiers would complete this with a spread, but Gary does a nice job of straightening back out to finish with a Daffy. It is Gary Margot, the first win of his professional career. Gary Margot at the top of the final standings. Jan Kene, second place, disappointing for him. Third place, Chuck Martin, finally back in the top four, and Scott Koff was number four. Our Nelson Carmichael is in the finish with our champions. All right, Gary Margot, I can't believe it. I'm sure you can't believe it either. First of all, tell me about your final run. I loved your Daffy Twist to Daffy at the bottom. Well, first of all, Jan was generous enough to give me what I thought was a better course, the red course, and I was happy about that. I've been skiing a good all day, and it worked out well. Was, How did you negotiate the top part of the course with those rocks up there? Um, Pretty much just had to jump over them, and hopefully, you know, you didn't hit one and throw you off the course. All right, well, That's great skiing today. Sport. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, and Maggie, Connor. <laughs> Woo! They're excited here in Vail, Colorado, and I'm excited here too. Maggie, Connor, a win again right here in Vail. Uh, I know you had a bit of a twist or a tilt maybe on your second air. Did that <laughs> yeah. worry you a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I but didn't the, get straight off the jump, and so I didn't get my twist in, but. It but it seemed right. to me in that red course, if you got off the air, then you could get ahead at the bottom. Yeah, the bottom was definitely faster on the red, so I was pleased to have that on the last run. It was good. Rachel gave me a good run for my money, so <laughs> it was fun. All right, well, it's good to see you guys Thanks. in the final. Thanks. That's the story from here, Duffy. Great show, great contest on a very tough course. Back to you. The Paul Mitchell World Series of Moguls, presented by Patron, has been brought to you by Outdoor Products, backpacks made right here in the USA. For Nelson Carmichael and everybody at ESPN, I'm Duffy Wilson. Thanks for a great ski season. We'll see you next year. You got a good day. That's all, folks. I told